On today's DAS tutorial, we're going to continue looking at our uh, beginner series um, by getting into the, some of the finer points of posing and what are called limits. So if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. I do DAS tutorials, primarily beginner and intermediate tutorials, about two or three times a week. So again, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and check back often to see, my, uh, see all my new content. So as I said, today we're going to do uh, kind of a beginner series and how to do uh, posing. And I've kind of touched on this a little bit in some of my other beginner tutorials, um, but I'm going to go a little bit more slowly this time and kind of show you what most of the pose controls do. So right now I have my figure dropped into my scene already. She's already clothed, got her hair, and her materials are all in place and she is ready to be posed. So right now she's in the default pose. Whenever you um, put a character in the scene, they're going to be posed in a pose very, very similar to this. And you have a couple of different options. Um, you can either do a custom pose all yourself, like where you pose each individual body part, or you can use a preset pose that either comes with Daz or that you can buy um, from the Daz store or from a third party vendor. And really the choice is yours and it's all depending on how comfortable you are posing as well as how much time you have. So if you pose the models all yourself, it can be very, very time consuming, uh, whereas you can save a ton of time by just purchasing poses from a, uh, from a, from a vendor. I usually end up doing a combination of both of those things. I've got a whole lot of, uh, of poses that I've purchased. Um, they might not be 100% right for each scene that I'm doing, but usually I can find one that's pretty close and then just kind of fine tune it um, however, however I need it, just to fit my scene or to fit my situation. Uh, but I find it's much easier, again, just to use a preset and then kind of fine tune it there as opposed to doing one all on your own. Um, another option that you have is to do your own preset poses where you can spend a lot of time doing setup and then save that pose for later use, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. But for now, we're gonna go over the individual uh, pose controls. So if I just click on my figure, it automatically selects the entire figure, and I've got all of my controls for every part of my figure, plus all of her clothing, anything she's wearing, the hair, uh, it has it all. So generally when you're posing, you wanna control individual body parts. And if I click again, actually if I don't even click, if I just highlight, just hover my cursor over, you can see different body parts highlight. So for instance, if uh, I have like shoulder, um, this is called right shoulder bend, it's basically the upper forearm, and then the lower forearm is right forearm bend. And then you have, you know, right hand, and then all of the digits, like all of this stuff can be controlled independently. And in order to control something, all you have to do is click on it. So if I want to do the upper forearm or the right shoulder bend, I just click that. And now I have my brackets around that area. And I have a couple of different options that I can do for controls. If you look over on the right, our scene hierarchy has changed. Now we have right shoulder bend selected and I can actually collapse it by clicking on that on that arrow, or I can expand it that way. So each one of these arrows can be um, expanded or, or condensed. Um, but over on the right, um, I have three main controls. I have front, back, bend, and twist. These are the three different ways that you can control that particular body part. So if I use front, back, then it's going to move it either in front of the body or behind the body if I move that back and forth. And notice, of course, everything else moves with it, but it stays stiff. Because I'm only moving that one part, just that shoulder bend. Um, and then if I do bend, it's going to bend it up and down. And then if I do twist, it's going to rotate it. That way. Um, there are some other controls that I'll go over. Scale, which you can make it larger or smaller. I generally don't use this for individual body parts. Sometimes the scaling isn't exactly right for a scene, or I may want a particular character larger or smaller than other characters. So I may scale the entire body, but you can actually scale individual body parts that way. So if you do that, you, you'll get really weird effects, but uh, it might be something that you want to do. So if you, ever, uh, if you ever mess up on one of these values, um, you can zero it out. Um, for scale, we want to set that to 100%. So just click the number and type in 100. 
and enter, and that'll put it back to normal. Um, for any of these other values, if you want to get them back to their original value, just hit zero, and that'll put it back where it was before. So I can zero all of these out. There we go, and that'll be back in our original default position. There we go. Um, we also have some other controls such as visible, and visible just makes it where you can either see or not see that particular part. So if I select that off, now her right forearm bend is invisible. We can see through it. You can't really tell that much because you can still see her clothing, but you can kind of see under it a little bit. Her clothing is covering most of it. But uh, let's go ahead and turn that back on. I'll do it with something you can see, like we'll do the hand. And let's go to visible. And we'll turn that off, and her hand disappears, but you can still see her fingers. There we go. All right, let's go back to the right forearm bend. And you can also select visible in render. And that means where that means that you'll be able to see it in the viewport, but whenever you render the image, that body part will be invisible. All right, so each individual body part has different controls. So if I select something entirely different, like let's say the head, now we have bend, you can bend up and down, twist left and right, and then side to side, we tilt the head side to side. And then again, we can also do scale, just like we did before, which again, that gets a very bizarre effect, so I highly recommend leaving that one alone unless you really know what you're doing and you wanna, and you wanna get a, a very specific effect with that, so yeah. Uh, we'll try, oh, uh, some of the body parts get relatively small, for instance, um, on the head, in addition to the head, we can do neck, you have upper neck, and then you can also do lower neck. There we go, to bend that in different ways. So a lot of times, if you're trying to bend the head, or, or twist it rather, and you can't get it quite far enough, like that's as far as it goes, we'll talk about a, another way to deal with that in a moment, but for now, I can click the upper neck and twist that to get an extra head turn. So again, if you can't get a body part to go quite as far as you'd like, you can use you know a different nearby body part to get some extra uh, twist out of it. Same thing, like with the forearm, we can twist that as far as it goes. Then we can twist the lower forearm to get more twist. And then further than that, we can do the hand to get even more twist. All right, let's put those back where they were. There we go. So something that you've uh, noticed that I was just talking about is that you can only go to a certain degree. Like you can only twist to a certain point and then it stops. You can't go any further. Um, that is because of limits. Right now, everything is limited in how far it can go in order to make it where you can't uh, create you know, unnatural looking poses. Um, however, sometimes you will have to do uh, some, some unnatural looking poses, probably more often than you would think. And the way that we do that is by turning off limits. And there are a couple of ways that we can do it. We can do that by doing individual body parts. For instance, if I do the head, again, we can only twist so far. But while I have the head selected, if I go to edit, figure, limits and I'm going to select limit off rotation so now the head no longer has limits so it'll twist as much as I want it to again this creates some very very unnatural looking effects or it can um, if you don't use it really carefully but now each of these controls now have limits turned off so it'll just rotate indefinitely and again, if you ever get it in a weird spot, if you ever do something that you shouldn't have, you can just zero it out. Just select that and hit zero on all of your controls, and that'll put it back in the default position. So sometimes you might be using a third-party pose that requires limits being turned off. It will usually tell you that in the instruction documentation. In those cases, you'll probably get a dialog box that will pop up and say that this pose requires limits be turned off or something similar and um, you'll just have to go in and turn limits off, no big deal. But if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of extreme poses and you wanna turn limits off for the entire figure, you can either select each body part individually, which I don't recommend, or just right click anywhere and say select all. So now we have every single possible posable joint on our figure selected. 
And then we do the same thing, go up to edit, figure, limits, and limits off. So now limits are turned off for the entire figure and the system still has to go by and do it individually so it might take a moment to load uh, while it does this. There we go, so now all the limits are turned off. So I can select any body part and twist it as much as I want and it'll just work. All right, um, so you can also select individual body parts by using, or I'm sorry, you can also select multiple body parts by using the control key. So for instance, if I'm going to be posing the arm and I know that I want everything from the shoulder on down selected, then you can do it by, so we have to click once to select the figure, then I'm gonna select the shoulder, and then I'm going to hold down my control key while I select the upper forearm, the lower forearm, and then the hand. And so now over here on my scene hierarchy, I've got all of those things selected. Right hand, right collar, which is the uh, upper shoulder, uh, right shoulder bend and right forearm bend. So everything from the shoulder down to the hand is selected. So I can just switch between all of these and control them you know, however I want. All right, and still another way of controlling body parts is to use the position uh, controls. Like whenever you select your entire figure, um, you have these positional controls where you can move your figure around. You can also use these for the individual body parts. Um, this one can cause some unintended side effects sometimes because you're basically grabbing this hand and then moving it. And sometimes that might cause other body parts to move. But if you need to move your hand just a little bit and you're having trouble getting it in the right spot by using your, your, um, your sliders up here, then you can just grab it and kind of move it where you want it. And again, if you do this enough, it's going to cause the rest of the body to move with it. Because it's basically like you're grabbing someone and just pulling them by the hand. Their hand can only move so much before the rest of the body starts to move. There we go. Let's go ahead and undo that. There we go. That'll put it back in our zero position. So once you have a pose that you like that you want to save as a preset, the way that you do that is to select your entire figure, then go up to File, Save As, and we're going to choose Pose Preset. From there, all you have to do is name your pose, hit the Save button, just remember where you save it, and then you'll be able to recall that later uh, anytime you want. So there are also some great products from the uh, DAZ store as well as from third-party vendors you can use to assist with posing your figures in different ways. I just wanted to cover the basics in this one, so I may get into some of those in a future video, but um, some body parts that are really difficult to control are like the facial features, uh, facial expressions, as well as tongue, mouth, lips, and hands can be really, really tricky, so there are some good products for those. But check out in the Daz store um, to see if you like anything there, and like I said, I may cover those in a future video. Uh, but that pretty much does it for this one. Like I said, I just wanted to get the basic um, controls out of the way and the uh, specifically limits as well. I actually had a question um, on one of my videos specifically about limits, and I just wanted to cover that in a video. So if you have any other questions or anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, be sure to put that in the comments below. Um, also check the comments um, where I've listed uh, links to all of the products that I've used in this video as well as some ways that you can support me either for free or monetarily. So check that out if you like my content and want me to keep making videos and be sure to hit the like button if you got something out of this as well and that will do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.